Welcome back to Vikings football with head coach Bruce Barnum as the Vikings get ready to go out on the road. This Saturday they play at Northern Colorado in a noon Pacific time kickoff. You can see the game on Pluto TV. You can also hear the live audio at GoVikes.com. And Portland State comes off another victory, 24 to nothing over Idaho at home. Portland State now 4-3, and 2-1 and one in the Big Sky Conference. And coach, we're going to talk about something we haven't talked about in Big Sky games in all the times we've done this, and that's a shutout. Vikings, their first shutout over a Big Sky opponent in 13 seasons. That had to be pretty gratifying. It was. Uh, the mighty goose egg, that's hard to do uh, at any level, uh, Mike. Um, uh, but to watch how that game you know, went on and uh, how our defense in some crucial situations, red zone, et cetera, ma made some plays um, uh, to keep them out of the end zone, uh, that's quite a feat. Uh, I was proud of everybody over there. and. Uh, again, it was fun to watch. And usually in Big Sky games, it's score fast, score first, score as often as possible. They're all high-scoring games. This wasn't the case, and you kind of had the feeling that if a team could finally score first, it would really grab control of that game, and that's kind of what happened. But when you went into that locker room at halftime, guys probably were looking around. They said the score is 0-0. This is a strange thing. How did, how did the team deal with that? Yeah, we probably could have just started in the third quarter, Mike, and, and skipped for... Get, let everybody get home for dinner, but um, it, it was an interesting locker room. Uh, the defense was high as a kite. The offense was frustrated, so um, I went over to the defensive side. You know, we're split there, and I said, hey, you know, keep it up. Uh, you got them dialed up. I said, don't be afraid to go score. I walked right into the other locker room, you know, and I, I said, no frustration. I, I said, you're in a defensive battle. Um, you're going to get on the scoreboard if you take care of the football, clean up the penalties, and win the field position. You know, we took, we got a turnover there, and right at, coming out of the gate, our defense did after three and out by us. And um, you know, I had two brilliant play calls, went backwards, got us out of field goal range, uh, but then we got one to get us back up there, so Nut could put it through the sticks. And well, that broke the ice. You know, it's not like the floodgates open, but it broke the ice. You know, a little sigh of relief on our sideline. You know, now they're thinking, okay, get up two scores, you know. But as, I liked how they responded coming out of the locker room offensively um, just because of putting up a goose egg in the first half. And after the ice was broken, that Viking offense did get going in the second half. And after the field goal, Portland State puts on a 91-yard drive led by that quarterback who just continues to play well. Davis Alexander led three touchdown drives. He had a couple of great runs in that first touchdown drive, got the Vikings up 10-0, and then you really felt like you had the game under control. There was more confidence, yes. Uh, that was a good, nice drive uh, by the offense, and, and a lot of it was um, Davis. I mean, his feet. Uh, it's tough to stop them, you know. If you're going to rush us, uh, there's and, and you leave a hole and you're covering everybody, he's got a chance to get some positive yards. So I'm I'm waiting for the day everybody just spies him and doesn't pass rush, so we can sit back there and throw. But um, no, uh, serious. No, no, he made great plays. I mean, he had the draw check there and empty because you know they were. Uh, spreading out a little too much for his gate, you know, one block and number eight and a heck of a football player for them, and, uh, or didn't even block and ran by him. Uh, so, liked how he responded, uh, kept the game after we got up two scores after that drive, uh, very smart uh, as he went from there as well. Just because the defense was playing well, uh, we played off their uh, backs. Okay, last thought on that game, and uh, you got to give the defense credit once again. And the defense making big plays, just like they did in the win over Southern Utah. Against Idaho, six sacks, four interceptions, four pass breakups, and uh, held uh, the Vandals to 236 yards. And it's tough to lose a game when you got a defense playing that well. Of course, they pitch a shutout, and uh, that really uh, makes it a lot easier to win, doesn't it? It does. Uh, you know, I told Pine and Coach Sadat, our defensive coordinator, as you're walking off the field, I said, you know, you do that every week, you know, we're going to have a hell of a, hell of a end of the season here. Um, but uh, you, you have to have kudos to them, uh, Mike. But the uh, coming out uh, the second half, how they responded the entire game, uh, played with confidence. And when our defense, we talked about this before, when our defense gets to the quarterback it, uh, it, it's a long day for the for the opponent because you add that to what we do in the back end uh, it, it's how the system works 
Okay, and the Viking defense is going to try to get to Northern Colorado quarterback as the Vikings go to a place they haven't played since 2015 in Greeley, Colorado. Uh, Coach, as you've looked at the film and prepared, uh, tell us what you've seen. Now, this is a Northern Colorado team that's given up some yards, given up some points, but one thing they do really well is force turnovers. They've forced a lot of them this year. Yeah, Aaron is Coach Collins, their head coach, he's always got him uh, ready to go. And again, the big sky, it doesn't matter what your record is. College football Saturday at your place, and somebody just told me this morning it's homecoming. He threw that in just to you know get a uh, get a kick uh, out of him for motivation wise. And, but you know, we're trying to get him ready. I mean, I showed a uh, PowerPoint the other night, Sunday night, of uh, beautiful Greeley and um, just the area and what we're doing and how we're traveling. Just trying to take away any anything uh, that might be give us adversity, you know, a distraction. Uh, but uh, Northern Colorado, Ernest Collins, money. Um, they have a quarterback who, who I think is one of the, possibly the best in the world. He, he's legit. He, he's fun to watch. And uh, their defense is always ready to go. They play hard. Uh, they get to the football. Um, and, and again, they kind of play off Ernest's uh, personality. I mean, he's kind of gruff get after it guy and that's how his kids play so it's going to be a challenge and that quarterback jacob knip he was actually the quarterback in 2015 uh, when the vikings had that great season but they went into Greeley and got a really tough contest from the bears the bears scoring in the final minute of the game and uh, he led uh northern colorado to that uh win and so uh, maybe it's a little payback time for the Vikings. He wasn't able to play last year against the Vikings when the Vikings beat the Bears here uh, because he was injured, but uh, he's back on the field. He is. He's legit. Actually, that 15 game, Mike, here's one, uh, the rest of the story, Paul Harvey. That's the first game in college football or high school football. We had a guy running. It wasn't a horse collar. I guess you'd call it a, a rump collar. A guy grabbed the back of our britches and it tore our guy's pants off. <laughs> He was out there with his girl. I said, well, is he down? Or is he like a helmet off? What's going on? Anyway, nice side note for you. They, they whooped us in 15. You know, we went down there and uh, they scored last, you know. Uh, so, like I said, the big sky, I, I don't care who the opponent is or what's going on. Um, anybody has a chance. It's who shows up. But their quarterback, again, uh, he's, uh, there's a lot of big name quarterbacks in this conference. Um, but he's, uh, he's a dude. He, he's fun to watch. So I think he'll be playing uh, on Sundays. All right, as we go into the game, Coach, once again, uh, Northern Colorado's played a really tough schedule, uh, particularly on the road, haven't had a lot of home games. Last home game they won, they beat Idaho a couple of weeks ago. As the Vikings go into town, what do they have to do uh, to get a victory in Greeley? It, it, tough place to play. Um, uh, add the homecoming festivities. Uh, it's you know, on the road, maybe a little different. Um, you have to win the turnover battle, uh, and we have to play clean. We, we've we got a couple more penalties last week. I don't like that. You know, we had it down to five. I need to keep that to a minimum so we're not playing behind the chains. And that's what we talked to the offense about a little bit is uh, on first and second downs, don't play behind the chains. Get ahead of the chains. I think they did a nice job of doing that. Uh, last week versus Idaho, just you know, third and two to seven is uh, a lot easier to call uh, and convert than third and thirteen. So um, we'll go down there and get after them um, uh, again. Uh, I'm sure uh, this is going to be a, a battle to try to get out of there with a W. All right, the Vikings at Northern Colorado this Saturday. Kickoff once again, noon Pacific time. You can watch it on Pluto TV. Uh, you can hear it at GoVikes.com live audio. For all your information on Vikings football, go to GoVikes.com.